What I want to do now is actually look at the eScience Labs and your Geology Lab Kit. So you'll see that the eScience Labs are now linked through Canvas. So what you'll want to do, you'll click on this assignment. So this is our first lab out of the Lab Kit. It's called uh, Building a Planet, Lab 1. You'll click on this and, it and it'll take you to a web page within Canvas. Um, so here's a, the, the two web pages. So we'll do the pre-lab first. So we'll click on this here. And in this lab, you'll see the learning objectives. You're going to want to read through the material here. Uh, there's uh, a series of topics. In fact, you could kind of scroll through this. Uh, at any rate, there are several little topics here. You want to go through these that kind of are background material to what we're going to be doing. And then as you go along through, you'll read the introduction. Uh, uh, hear about the Big Bang and singularity. Uh, I think the, the question they want down here, this little fact check, uh, be, began from a, from a single point, right? And then, and then experienced this incredible expansion. We'll talk about primary heating, the layers of Earth, uh, um, and the planetary differentiation. I usually call that gravitational differentiation, where the heavier material sinks to the core, a lot of material forms a crust. But this kind of goes all through here. Uh, one of the things that I like about this uh, uh, little little uh, introduction here is that they do kind of look at the Earth in, in chemical layers versus physical layers. And um, in my lectures later on, you'll see that I pr pretty much talk a lot about these chemical layers. There's the core, the mantle, and the crust. But also, I talk about these, and I, I don't emphasize that they're chemical or physical, but just know for now, just to get us started off on the right on the right foot here is that the chemical layers, um, you know, the core is primarily iron and nickel, iron and nickel metal, high density. The mantle is mostly a silicate, magnesium, and iron. Uh, and then when we get to the crust, we got sodium, calcium, silicon up here. So there's a chemical variation again based on that gravitational differentiation, that planetary differentiation. Remember, a differentiation refers to a separation, right? Now, uh, for the physical layers, there's inner core, outer core, uh, um, and really the mantle is really broken up into this mesosphere, a cenosphere, and the lower parts of the lithosphere, right? So one thing about this lithosphere, and lithosphere are the tectonic plates. So when we think about the lithosphere, we're really talking about tectonic plates. The thing about the lithosphere, the lithosphere is kind of a hybrid uh, uh, um, layer. It, it includes parts of the uppermost mantle uppermost reaches of the mantle, plus the crust, right? So think of this lithos, it's a Greek word for rock or stone, so it's a rigid or rocky sphere of earth, whereas a stenosphere here, a steno means weak in Greek, it's a Greek word for debilitated or weak, so the asthenosphere is kind of like a, like silly putty, it's, it's, it flows, it's sort of like a solid or like a liquid, it's kind of a strange material, but it allows the tectonic plates to move and slip and slide above this weak asthenosphere. So at any rate, you're going to go through this material here, you know, here it goes, chemical layers, physical layers, the important thing at the bottom here, is uh, you'll kind of go through a little quiz. Uh, there's a little um, quizlet you go through here based on some of the readings, right? So here, the temperature of, uh, uh, that's false, right? The temperature of Earth's layers decreases the function. No, actually, they increase, right? So, uh, and then you'll wait and it tells you it's the correct answer. You click anywhere and it takes you to the next question. And here, uh, most minerals in the crust contain primarily what elements? Um, sodium and calcium are the ones they discussed in the in the in the topic up here and correct so you kind of go through all those and then you want to do the pre-lab so you, when you click on here it'll oh, it'll give you a link to Microsoft Word you'll download these questions and the important thing about here about these questions is once you complete this assignment this is what you need to photograph or you need to scan or make a PDF of this or something, and this is what you want to send me uh, um, uh, in the Dropbox, right? So if we go back to our lab over here, you'll see that in here, uh, there's an, a Submit Assignment button. You'll click on here, and you'll attach those files on here. So there's a pre-lab, and there's, there's Exercise 1. Let's look at Exercise 1 real quick. So for this exercise, you, there are some rocks that come with your geology lab kit. You'll use those rocks. You're going to um, determine their density, right? You'll determine the density based on this equation here. Uh, 
and then you can look at some there's a scale that comes with your with your uh, kit and you want want to calibrate it so you watch that little video tutorial on there there's also it, it, there's you know how do you read a meniscus in a graduated cylinder so there's a little tutorial on that as well um, but the, again at the bottom here you know you you'll want to follow these instructions but then at the bottom here you're going to download the data sheets and so again these are the ones that you're going to submit um, for the assignment so here you'll, you'll have um, uh, the rock samples. So there's unknown rock one, unknown rock two. You're going to weigh them on your little balance. You're going to determine their volume. You're going to determine, uh, uh, or the volume displaced here. And then you'll figure out the volume of the rock here. And then over here, you'll determine the density. Remember, the density is the mass over the volume. And then based on the numbers you get, remember, you're doing it three times to get, a, get an average of, of the um, of the sample here and then you'll compare it to these densities to see what your material what your rock most cl closely represents here and then there's more information you'll answer some questions here on the data sheet and then um, you'll submit this uh, to um, online so one of the things about uh, one of the things about this question number eight here they give you the mass they, they give you the the basically the volume of the block here it's a wood block and they give you the mass so you can just determine the volume and here's the mass so it's a mass over the volume will give you the density right so that's how you figure out this density but then over here uh they 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 give you um you use that same density you calculated for the block you know the density of water is 1.0 grams per centimeter cube. But this equation, I don't like the way they have it formatted here. So it's really the, the density of the block, which you calculated in the preceding problem, divided by the density of water, which is 1, right? 1 gram per centimeter cube. And then equals um, this R, which is the, the, the height or the, the height of water of, of the block underwater. And then here we're going to put divided by right here divided by h and h is a total height of lock the tricky part here and i had problem with this until i realized they give you h h is right here h is the height so h is eight centimeters so you want to use eight centimeters here you know the density of the block because you just calculated it up here you know the density of water which is 1.0 so all you're doing is solving for r and that's what they want you to do which is they want you to know the height below the water so you have the the block density, the water density, and eight centimeters for the height of the block. So again, once you complete this uh, data sheet, you'll you'll scan it, take a photo of it, uh, and then submit it to me uh, on in the Dropbox um, for this for this lab assignment. For example, let's look here at the sedimentary rocks lab. If we click on this one. We'll do the pre lab. Let's look at the uh, the actual exercise here. And then again, here we have several unknown rocks. So you're going to determine, uh, uh, identify these rocks. Uh, acetic acid acts as a, a weak hydrochloric acid, uh, or you'll see that a, a, a certain mineral um, will react in that, and that mineral is called calcite, and a rock composed of calcite is limestone. So that's kind of a, an aid to help us pick out what rocks have calcite um, or, or, or limestone. And then some other materials we'll use. And so again, you follow the procedures here, and then uh, there's even a, a data table on, on minerals that can be found in sedimentary rocks here and some of their properties. For example, again, calcite will effervesce an acid. So in the acetic acid, uh, it should have a reaction. Um, one thing about dolomite, um, uh, you have to, the key, key word here is powder. If you can powder that dolomite, make it into fine uh, powder, and then put the acetic acid on, you will see a weak effervescence. Then as we go along here, um, again, the important thing is downloading the data sheets, completing those, and submitting those to the Dropbox in, uh, in this particular assignment here. And the other thing about the labs, right, you'll need this Geology Lab Kit 7021 from esciencelabs.com. And so it'll look something like this, right? And then uh, your lab kit on the inside cover of the, uh, of the box here, it'll have an access code. Uh, I've already used this access code, uh, but this will give you access to the the eScience Lab manual or the instructions to do the the particular labs. But in this lab, you'll see that there's a variety of of, of materials, right? So, for example, for minerals, there's going to be a bag with minerals and different tools 
a, a copper plate here, a nail. You'll have a, 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 a street plate for scratching the mineral across the street plate, and also a glass plate. You'll see that glass uh, has a specific hardness, which will help us determine what these minerals are, right? So that's an example of some minerals. Uh, you'll see that um, you know, you'll have a, some goggles in here. You'll have some, some sediment. We'll do experiments on this sediment. It's all pretty much laid out and it's pretty specific uh, each laboratory uh, exercise. Uh, you'll, you'll have a thermometer, right? Uh, it even comes, uh, we'll be doing some density calculation problems, so it even comes with a little uh, mass balance and uh, a graduated cylinder to determine um, uh, the mass over volume, which is density, right? So we'll do some problems with that. Uh, so there's a variety of kits or, or, or tools that come in this uh, uh, geology lab kit, and they're required for, um, uh, for this course. If you don't cost of the kit, it's a, it's a custom kit. It's about $129, $130, uh, about the price of a, uh, in fact, it's, it's about the price of a book.